I'm David Parnes, and I'm sitting here with my business partner, James Harris. Word. Welcome to our new podcast, Rise Above the Ranks. This is the sister publication of readtheblueprint.com. Subscribe by clicking below. Right below. Each week, we're going to be discussing one topic that will better you as an agent. Today, cold calling. Oh, it's a good topic of conversation. I feel like we were born and raised cold calling, you and I. <laughs> We've done it all, right? Panos of Panay. We've had Only some... you would understand that Ooh. if I say Panos of Panay. Yeah. I mean, I personally think, and I don't know if you'll agree or disagree, cold calling is the single-handedly most important thing that we did before we even got into the business that got us to where we are today. Because if you can get over the fear of cold calling someone, you can basically get over the fear of almost anything, I think. Totally. Um, and also, if you can sell someone something over the phone yep. without them meeting you, yep. how easy is it to sell a beautiful house with them in front of you? Absolutely. So the key to the cold call is getting them to the house or getting the seller to let you in the house. And I'm going to say the most important thing to cold calling, and I'd love to know if you agree, is energy. Mm -hmm. Energy, mm -hmm. mindset, and excitement. Those are the three things that I think will separate you from the 50 other people cold calling the same person. Would you agree? 100%. And it's actually amazing because when we used to, we used to sell advertising over yep. the phone, the truth is that it actually doesn't matter what you're selling. Yep. It, it does, but it doesn't. The point is you're selling the sizzle. Yep. Absolutely. And if they like you and if they buy into your energy, albeit over the phone, you will get that result. Amen. And you will get that sale. And yep. in this case, the sale for our cold calling is the listing meeting. Which is brilliant. Yeah. And I think for those of you that don't know, Dave and I were selling advertising space when we were, I mean, I was, was 16. 16. You right. were 16, I was 18. Crazy, right out of yes. school. And now I'm going to tell somebody, I'm going to tell everybody this, cold calling, you're at home, you're in the office, I don't care where you're cold calling. Stand the f*** up though. Stand mm -hmm. up. But not only that, dress for success. I think even on the telephone, if you feel good and you look good, your energy is going to be better. Your, your conviction is going to be better. Even if you're at home, put on a dress shirt, look good, do your hair, smell good, feel right. Because when that person picks up the other end of the phone, you have to be right to sell yourself to that person. Totally. Right. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's about that conviction, that energy, the self belief in yourself that you're going to sell yourself to that person. And in order to do that, you have to feel right, you have to look good, and you have to have the the mindset straight. And every no, remember this. Every no means you're closer to a yes. That's the best thing to remember. You, you will literally get a hundred no's, maybe a hundred and fifty no's, right? And then you might get a yes. But yep. when you get that yes, it's going to feel ten times better. That's right. Actually, hundred and fifty times better exactly. because you've gone through that. So it's 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 like door knocking. It's it's consistency. It's yep. persistence. Yep. And it's 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 sticking to the formula. Amen. Remember, cold calling in any business is a numbers game, mm -hmm. right? The more people you call, the more likely you're going to hook one. And once you hook that one, the adrenaline you're going to get is going to arguably be better than any adrenaline you've had ever before. Totally. And so it is, it's the persistence and it is like Dave just said, every no, you're closer to a yes. If you have that mindset, every time you hear that word, no, you're just going to be more energized to get to the yes, to get to the yes. I think we need to do some role play because that's the best way. <laughs> and, and we've done this since we were children, okay? Literally children. To the extent they actually thought you were Jane. Yes, I mean, when I was cold calling at 16, my voice hadn't broken and I was Jane. If someone Has said- Has it broken? Not yet. <laughs> if somebody said, hi, Jane, instead of trying to correct them, I just went along Roll with it. Roll with it. The customer's I'm, always right. Hey, oh my God, that's so funny. I'll be Jane for the next 20 minutes. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so you're the Talk seller. about role playing. You're a seller of a $10 million house. Okay, let's do it. And I'm the agent calling you. And I'm going to be an arsehole just to make your life a little bit more difficult. God, that should be <laughs> fun. Okay, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Oh, hi, this is James Harris. How are you? 
fine. Sorry, who's who's James Harris? Oh, I'm James Harris. I'm an agent, and I I do know it's probably. Oh, it. you're that Wally from Million Dollar Listing. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't Sorry. fun. Sorry, I'm great. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yes, that's me. <laughs> you're one of those weird Brits. I am oh, Spice God. Girl. So I'm James Harris, and I know you probably think it's crazy that I'm just calling you out of the blue like this, but. And I know your time is very important. I do want to discuss your property. And I know that obviously you're probably not thinking about selling, but I do have a buyer right now that is from overseas, extremely motivated by your property's location. Would you be interested in selling in any way at all? Well, it just expired. So I think for now, I'm just going to let it breathe. Letting it breathe is absolutely fine. Do you know why it didn't sell the first time round? Yeah, I mean, look, the agent made me price reduce twice and then, you know, we didn't have a lot of showings and the showings we did have, they didn't respond that well. So, you know what, I'm just going to, you know, hold a beat and just take my time. It was a little bit stressful. I'm not going to, and I appreciate that feedback, and I'm not going to comment on the agent that you were working with. But what we do see over and over in this business is that these listings can go stale. They accumulate days on market, which is really detrimental for the property. Whilst I have a buyer, when you refresh it with a new agent, new marketing, new PR, new everything, new photos, you can actually get a completely different response. But before even trying to talk about listing your property, would you consider just letting me show it to a qualified buyer? I mean, what do you think it's worth? I mean, look, I don't think it was completely overpriced. I'd want to look more closely into the comps, but my buyer is very motivated by the location. But right now, what I'd love to know is if you'd just give me the opportunity to tell my client about it, and then if it does work for them, get back to you, and then we go from there. Can we do that? Okay. All right, I'm going to give my client a call right now. I appreciate it. As soon as they give me the go ahead, I'm going to give you a call back and we're going to schedule a time. Perfect. Look at that. One out of one. Beautiful. Well, you weren't (laughs) such an asshole. So I really do appreciate your time. uh, And thank you so much. And I'll be in touch to schedule that showing soon. Thank you, James Harris from Million Dollar Listing, Los Angeles. Indeed, formally. But that to me right there is energy. It's excitement. It's persuasion. It's actually what I did there was acknowledge that they would think it was weird that I was calling. But when a listing expires on the MLS, you have to remember 500 agents get your information and they call you. So how are you going to set yourself apart from everybody else? Energy, excitement, conviction, and just getting them to a place where they're willing to listen, right? Totally, yeah, 100%. How could you critique that cold call? I think it was perfect. Perfect. Brilliant. (laughs) I but think it was great. Bottom line, you put no, them think, into I a think, box. Yeah, I, I think you, you, they're, they're going to have objections, right? Because yep. they're human beings and they're, you know, they've gone through whatever they've gone through, right? So as long as you're dealing with every objection and then really making them feel good, it's not just about, oh, yeah, I get that, and then talking about something else. It's about, yes, I get that, dealing with whatever they said their objection is, their other agent, pricing, Yep. I'm stressed deal with that objection, make them feel better about it, yep. and then ask them a question that can lead to the next thing. At the end of the day, we're, we're only trying to benefit them. Amen. At the end of the day, you're just trying to get the house sold for that person that wants to sell their house. 100%. You're not trying to push something on them they don't want. Yep. So, so, so even with that mindset, knowing that you're here to provide a service and better that person's life in a certain yep. way, that should be enough I agree. to just give you that conviction, totally. which, which you demonstrated very well. And I think an objection most people take as rejection right you get an objection and you think someone's trying to get you off the phone or or, or end the call or i think an objection is not rejection an objection is actually that person opening the door and engaging with you to get back to them look at an objection as facetime phone time now imagine that you can step in front of these objections before they've even brought them to you Tell them what they're already thinking, relate with them, step in front of the objection, and then go at them with excitement and passion. And I'm telling you, energy is contagious. You have the right energy with these people, they buy into it. Objections are discovery. Amazing. That's where you're going to listen and you're going to learn. I agree. All right. It's only right now that we do a cold call. I'm the client. (laughs) You're the agent. Let's go. Ring, ring. Yes. Hello, is that Mr. Harris? 
It is actually, yes. How can I help? Hi, I'm so, so sorry to call you out of the blue. I know you probably get this call a lot. My name is David Parnes. I am an agent with the agency. Sorry, you, David who? David Parnes with the agency. P A. am British, so P-A-R-N-E-S. Oh, Parnes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it, they say. Got it in one. Yes. How can I help? I drove past your house in the Bird Streets. I actually live not far away. And I have to tell you, what you have done with that house is amazing. It's probably one of the nicest houses I've seen in the area. Thank you so much. And I've built houses. So, and I genuinely just wanted to commend you on that. Um, that means a lot. But we've put a lot of time and work into this this property. I so can thank see. You. I can see. And did you build it for yourself to live in? Are you um, going to be there for long term? What are your plans, if you don't mind me asking? No, we built it to, to live. Um, and, you know, it's, it's taken us many years. Um, what can I help you with, David? So, look, the house is absolutely beautiful. I'm working with a client right now, in fact, two clients specifically, that have asked me for a property near my house of exactly the same architecture that you have built. And I honestly would just love to come and meet with you and, and see your house. If, if for any other reason, if for, for no other reason, than just to meet you and, and, and see your house, because it's, it's stunning. It's beautiful. Well, I really do appreciate that. And look, we, we, we're not completely against selling it, but we do have an agent that we have uh, a, a relationship with. Totally. Um, you know, but we just haven't been thinking about selling. Well, look, the truth is I actually do have two buyers. If you have a relationship with your agent, I do not want to tread on their toes in any respect. If you have a signed listing with them, I have no interest about, you know, treading on people's toes. I would be representing the buyer. Um, but if you are open to meet with me, I would love that. And if you've signed a listing, I would love your agent's details so that I can potentially set up a showing with my clients. I appreciate that, David. Thank you. We, we don't have a signed listing because we weren't thinking of, uh, of, of selling the property, but... Um yeah, I tell you what, why, why don't you come over on uh, Tuesday at nine o'clock and come, come check out the property and we'll go from there. Well, I walk my dog past your house every day. I won't bring my dog because she is awfully behaved. <laughs> I will make that exception. I will be there on my own. Um, and I would really, I'm really looking forward to meeting you. Thank you so much. Done. I look forward to it. Thank you for the call. Thank you. Bloody brilliant. Well, not too aggressive. Not too aggressive, respectful to the other agent and that relationship. You have and to be. You can't be greedy because the moment that they sniff out that you're unethical, they're probably going to dislike you, right? And I also love the fact in that particular scenario, you've driven it, you've driven by it. You're not just carpet bombing, calling anyone and everybody. I do think when you're cold calling, be specific with who you're calling. Have a reason of why you're calling. And by the way, if someone spent the last five years building a house, they probably are in love with their house. So they probably do want to show it off in some regard. So I think that's a, a, a really good angle. It's specific, it's to the point, and you're not really giving them any reason unless they have no interest in selling to, to say no. And by the way, don't forget, even if they don't want to sell today, you meet with them when they, if and when they do want to sell and you yep. leave that impression on them, they're going to call you. I agree. It's a pipeline, right? I agree. Build that pipeline. Something's got to stick. Right. And by the way, we just got two yeses. Doesn't work like that. Yeah, I wish it did. Sadly, <laughs> it doesn't. But if you take those points away consistently yep. and apply them to your calls, you will get results. Mark my words. You will get results. That's Agreed. a promise. That's a promise. Agreed. Okay. It's question time. I do like question time. There's always a weird question, but let's go for well, it. Well, I like this because every week we take two questions yep. from our readers and our subscribers. Yep. So Anne has asked... The bond you has, the bond you have is remarkable. If only you knew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. How often do you fight and disagree? Wow, that's a good mm. question. Is it? Um, yes, I think in any friendship slash business partnership, there's always going to be disagreements and discussions. I think it's how we deal with them. And I think it would be weird for us, same as a marriage, really, if there was never any argument. So I think we have a lot of healthy discussions, healthy disagreements, but you have to give and take in any marriage or business partnership for that matter. So it's understanding it's okay to be wrong, understanding it's okay to not have the same opinion. Yes, we, we debate a lot, but ultimately we always come to an agreement. I like that. And also we have to realize that our end goal is in line. We both want our business to be hugely successful. We want to yep. take it to the limits. 
We want to look back in 20 years' time, 30 years' time, and say, we absolutely crushed it, yep. and we did everything we could have done, and the result that we got, whether we sell, whether we retire, whatever we've done, right? The max. We know that we've done the max. And knowing that, yeah, of course we're going to disagree, because we, the only time we're going to fight and disagree is either if ego gets in the way, or if we just are debating something. We just have a difference of opinion on how we're going to get there on a smaller level. So we work through that, and... and I mean, I think it's healthy. It's healthy. Good basically. question, and so. Thank you. Anyway, yeah. There you go. Next question. This is from CJ. How much of your week or day is spent prospecting new deals versus managing existing business? That's a good question. It's a great question. I think in any business, there needs to be structure. There needs to be a CRM. You need to understand what you're doing from 9 to 11, 11 to 2, 4 to 6. And then you also have to understand what happens in the evening. Balance, family life, home life, work life. For me, personally, I spend the duration of my day prospecting. If it's working with a buyer, making sure I'm following up with all my buyers. If it's a seller, making sure I followed up with all my sellers. I'm never, ever, ever not during a business day thinking about how can I prospect? How can I build? Who can I follow up with? Who should I speak to? But there does have to be structure and streamline to that. Um, but in, in short, all day, every day, I'm prospecting and looking at ways that we can grow our business. I think it's like the, the, the managing existing deals kind of like entwines within the the prospecting and by the way you can manage existing business and prospect at the same time absolutely one hand's into the other well yeah exactly that buyer or seller could know someone they may have another property so always be prospecting amen thank you for listening to rise above the ranks our new podcast we hope you benefited from today um please don't forget to subscribe to readtheblueprint.com and we will see you soon thank you